Hey guys, I'm gonna give this a second to do its little thing on Facebook. Um, I am coming at you live to talk about the three unconventional things I invested in to scale my business to the next seven figures. So if you are seeing me live, um, say hi so I know you're here. If you are on replay, give me a hashtag replay and let me know that you are here. I am gonna dive into this because I have to say, if you have been an entrepreneur for any period of time and you've watched other people rapidly scale their business, you've probably asked yourself, how the heck did they do this? And you've kind of always wanted an insider insight. And this is how I was for a really long time. I would see people talking about their big growth, um, hitting 50K, 100K months and thinking to myself, oh my gosh, if I could just understand how they did it and what they did to get there, my business would be so much easier. So I promised myself, that once I scaled my business to that level, I would come in and give the dirty details because I feel like there's so much secrecy behind um, growth in the online space. So I'm gonna literally break down for you the three unconventional things I invested in in my business to scale to my next seven figures. And I'm gonna talk about why I'm not creating any new marketing and how I simplified all of my marketing down to just one system, why rapid growth actually requires you to break down so that you can build back up, and why these three shifts and investments that I made into my business practically guarantee me to 10X my growth in 2022. So as you're hopping on, say hi, let me know you're here live, where you're watching from. Um, and if you are new here, because we have a lot of new faces, my name is Naza Chaveri. I'm a business growth strategist and 18 year marketing expert, and I help my clients become the only and incomparable solution in their industry so they can convert cold clients or cold leads into clients in just seven days. So let's jump into it, okay? Because I want to break it down. Let's be real, when you think about scaling a business, the first things that probably come to mind are, oh, more marketing, more sales, more ads, more stuff, right? But the truth of the matter is, when it comes to truly scaling your business, more is not the answer, okay? So at the beginning of this week, I asked a question where I said, what is the enemy of scaling? And a lot of people had a lot of different answers. The truth is the enemy of scaling is complicated. If you have something that's complicated, scaling is gonna be really difficult. So really quickly, I want you guys to understand the difference between growth and scaling. Growth is about building, right? Putting pieces together, creating all the things that are necessary in order to take your business to the next level. Scaling is taking the things that are already working and essentially pouring gasoline on them and letting them blow up. So it's amplification. It's not building new things, it's taking what's working and literally scaling that as it works. So when you understand that, you see things a lot differently. Hey, Julia, hey, Nicole, so glad you're here. Um, <laughs> so when you understand the difference, you have to understand that the, the strategy used for scaling versus the strategy that's used for growth is very different. So here's the deal. The first thing I wanna talk about is why I'm not creating any new marketing and how I'm actually simplifying my growth down to one system. Now here's the truth. If you, it's really easy when you're in the growth stage of your business to get caught up in every new marketing tactic. I'm talking about more lead magnets, more platforms, more tactics, all of those things, right? And you, and to be honest with you, I've been 18 years in marketing. I've tried them all at some point in time, right? And some have worked better than others, but the truth is if you're an established business owner, you probably have a folder full that's collecting dust with all the different things you've tried, okay? Again, truth is scaling isn't about more, it's about less. Okay, so drop less in the comments. I want you guys to hear that. I want you guys to understand that growth is about building, putting more pieces, right? Scaling is about less. So drop less in the chat because I want you guys to hear that. When you get to the phase of scaling, you want less. When you're in this, the space of growth, you may have more and that's okay. But what we wanna do is move from more to less, okay? It's about simplification and optimization, very different. So when you move into scaling, all you're doing is simplifying and optimizing. You're tweaking, you're making small shifts, and then you're literally amplifying that. That's exactly what I did. I took a deep dive into my marketing to see what was working, to see what was kind of working, and what didn't serve me at all. So I'm gonna give you the down and dirty of what I did to cut the dead weight. So the things I cut dead weight on are, is I literally removed every freaking lead magnet that I had, okay? 
Now, I know if you're in the beginning parts of your business, you may be sitting there creating 100 different lead magnets, and I'm gonna be the first one to tell you, please don't waste your time, okay? Do not waste your time, because I cannot tell you, hey, Erica, hi, um, Sarah, so glad you guys are here. Because the truth is, when you are building and you're creating all those things, you think you need more lead magnets. You need more stuff to give to your audience because it's more stuff that gets people in. Hands up if that's ever been you. You've thought to yourself, oh, it's just more stuff. I just need more things to bring people in, okay? So the things I cut completely out of my marketing were lead magnets. I don't have a single, like, download this and do that. I don't have any of those anymore. Those didn't serve me well, okay? And the reason they didn't serve me well is they attracted a ton of freebie clients. So they attracted all the people who wanted to look around and say, oh, give me more free stuff and left it really frustrating for me thinking, why is nobody purchasing? So for years in my business, that's how I felt. I felt like, why am I putting out all this great stuff and nobody's purchasing, right? Sarah, you, you know what I'm saying? Like that is the most frustrating thing is to create more stuff and feel like that stuff isn't pulling people in. But lead magnets and things like that have a tendency to attract those very DIY style clients, okay? We don't wanna do that. So that meant I threw out all of my lead magnets. I cut down on offers. So I used to offer like three different offers. In 2021, I went all in on my one offer, my Sustainable Profit Academy. So I literally dwindled everything down to the one offer I knew would be massively transformational in a big, huge way. So many people feel like they have to expand. I hear people constantly talking about product suites. You need more and more product suites. What if I were to tell you that you can hit seven figures in your business with one offer? Sounds insane, but it's totally true. One offer is all you need to make massive impact and revenue, both, okay? Get rid of the crap that literally clouds your way. Okay, so the things I got rid of, because I told you I wanna to be totally honest with you, I got rid of every freaking lead magnet. I got rid of all of my offers except for one. I focused on my signature flagship offer that I knew was gonna get my clients results and I threw everything else away. I also dwindled down because for a long time I did live launches and that was like my big source of income. And I was like, this doesn't work. This is frustrating. This is just constantly attracting the wrong types of clients and still felt like how would I be able to scale that? because there were so many things I had to weed through to get it, whether it was my energy spent on those things or if it was um, the, the amount of people that I was bringing in that weren't actually ready to purchase. Does that mean I'm never gonna do a challenge or a workshop again? No, I absolutely will because I think they're fun. I just will not focus my energy on them. That is not my revenue generation. My revenue generation comes from an, or my evergreen system. Okay, because evergreen is the way of being able to actually take a step back from your business, okay? So what that left me with after throwing all of that stuff away, and Julia, my, beautiful, my wonderful VA here can attest to this, I threw away everything and got serious on the things that worked. So we made a bank of content. We took all the content I created over the last year because I'd spent so much time doing that. We pulled all of that content because that was already working. That was so easy. And so rather than me sitting and spending all my time creating new content all the time, I now can pull from a bank of content I already have and literally tweak and optimize it. Because what gets repeated gets remembered. You do not need more content in your business. You need to be able to take the content that works, tweak and optimize it when you're scaling, okay? So in 2022, I actually won't need to create any new content in my business. Like imagine that for a minute, that your business would not require you creating new content because you have it all created, which is huge, right? This is actually what I teach my clients in our strategic visibility formula is my clients only have to create three to five pieces of content and they work in 90 day cycles, which means once they've created 90 days worth of content, they no longer have to create content. You're golden, you're optimizing and tweaking. We're not creating more because less is more, right? Less is more when it comes to scaling your business. So I want you to think about that for a little bit. So Sarah asked a great question. She said, how long do you suggest testing to see if content works? 
So here's the thing about testing content. Content always works. The only difference is what needs to be tweaked. So it's not a matter of your content didn't work. If you have the strategy, and Sarah, I know you have the strategy, it's really about how do we take that and tweak it to make it even better? Because I think people get caught up in the fact that content doesn't work. Content works. It's whether or not you're putting enough effort behind it and enough time sharing that and getting it in front of more people that really makes it happen, okay? So really getting to the point of having the same content that gets repeated over and over again. So I replaced all of my marketing with really my one bingeable authority system. So if you're new here and you don't know what my bingeable authority system, it's my Netflix inspired sales system that essentially works on Evergreen and has people come into this bingeable authority system and within two to seven days turn into clients. Like high ticket, high end, oh my gosh, chomping at the bit, ready to buy clients. And there's a lot of sales psychology and a lot more that goes into it, but literally can replace everything. That means my revenue is going to be generated from this evergreen sales system that gets done again and again and again. So again, all those funnels, all those webinars, all those things that I had, I had like 20 different challenges that I did, low ticket offers with tripwires, all of those things left me in hustle mode. And when I took a cold, hard look at scaling, the truth is if I was to scale that, how the heck could I scale a hustle? Okay, so that's why I say to you guys, hustling and growth are maybe can go hand in hand. But when we get into scaling mode, you cannot be hustling. You cannot be hustling. It has to have a flow. It has to be working consistently. You have to be able to know and be able to say with predictability what results you're going to get from it. Okay, and I knew that if I wanted to work with those people who wanted real and lasting change, I took a look at where my best clients came from, how they were being attracted to me, what was the common denominator? What was the mechanism that was working? And it was my bingeable authority system. So I went all in on that. That was what I put all of my time and energy into. Anything that I pushed traffic towards was for that. Because that was what gave me the highest level of clients that were ready to invest versus the DIY clients, okay? And the last thing that you want when you're really scaling a business is waiting through hordes of people who don't wanna take action. And that's what happens when we have tons of lead magnets and we're trying to ascend people into higher offers is we're in this constant convincing mode. And I don't know about you, but your energy, your time, your space of being able to like communicate with clients who really need to work with you should not be spent on convincing, should not be spent on buy my low offer, then buy another offer and then another one. Those are what I call parking lot leads, the people who just sit and wait. You don't wanna deal with that. Ready to invest clients were drawn to my bingeable authority system because it allowed them to make quick decisions. Because remember, my ready to invest clients look very different than my DIY clients. They're people who are seeking out solutions and want to make decisions quickly. They ask, they beg that they want it like yesterday, okay? So I wanted to be able to do that and that's why my bingeable authority system literally creates conversions in as little as 48 hours. That means someone who didn't know me at all can go through my bingeable authority system within 48 hours, be completely pre-sold into working with me, not even asking the price point, okay? So this is what I did, I optimized, I made tweaks, I looked at my numbers, I knew where my opportunities were to make it better. That's another key thing when it comes to scaling is you have to know your numbers. When you scale a business, you have to be able to say with certainty that this is what's working, this is what's not, and these are the spaces of being able to optimize, okay? So that's what I was left with. The things I was left with after doing all of that was a bank of content that was already completed, validated, and got results that I could simply optimize and reuse to get even better results. Number two was a system that was already delivering pre-sold clients to me every single week. So I didn't have to waste time on more sales calls or getting on more, getting talking with more people that weren't ready to purchase, okay? Because I see a lot of people when they're scaling and they're using sales calls that they come to one of two things. A is that they either have to outsource all their sales process because they don't wanna get on the call. They don't wanna get on call after call after just to hear I can't afford it. Or they try to get away from sales calls altogether. But here's the deal, the difference is you can scale a system that delivers pre-sold clients. Because if you're only getting on calls with people who are saying yes to you, why wouldn't you get on the call, right? Personally, for me, no matter how much I scale, I wanted to be able to ensure that the people I brought on, I could get results for. So I wanted a personal touch of someone getting on a phone call with them, okay? 
So far, is all of this making sense? Because that was point number one. That was just point number one, is literally bringing it down to less stuff. No more juggling different messages, no more different offers, not a bunch of different things because scaling is, again, about amplifying the things that are working. So I'm gonna give you an action item for you to do today on this one first step. Take a look at all of your marketing efforts right now. So that means, are you going live every week? Are you creating 10 pieces of content? Are you doing reels? Are you doing challenges? Are you doing um, low ticket offers? I want you to take a look at all of those things, okay? Jot down what marketing strategy is bringing in the best clients. Which one is giving you those hell yes clients who are so eager to work with you. I want you to think about the process, the client acquisition process of what brings in the best clients because you want to multiply the clients that are already really amazing. You want to bring in more of those. So in order to do that, you need to look at what work to bring them there. Okay, that's number one. Then you want to review the strategy and look at where the opportunities are to optimize it. Look at what strategy produced the best results and ask yourself, where did things fall through the cracks? So this may be, maybe you had a lot of people who fell off during when you sent out the emails. Maybe it was that certain, uh, the certain process on the back end of a live. Looking at what piece of the puzzle isn't working together. So sometimes something's as simple as how my clients, um, what they do when someone joins their Facebook group makes a world of difference. So I have clients who literally have had Facebook groups for years and years. They're bringing people in, but the conversions were really slow or they weren't getting conversions unless they were doing live launches. What we did is we adjusted the whole process so that someone, they knew that their Facebook group was, was creating great engagement, great traffic, great conversions, bringing in great clients. We essentially optimized it. So when people came in, there was an actual journey for them to go from just coming into their group to saying yes to them as a client, okay? A lot of people don't look at this from a strategic point of view. They look at it as I'm creating more content, I'm doing more things, but it doesn't actually go there. How do you sell your offer without launching? I'm relieved to hear you get rid of your lead magnets. None of mine worked in the past. So frustrating, Vanessa. So I use an evergreen system, Vanessa. My evergreen system is literally where I, any, any traffic that I have goes through this mini series. Um, which is my bingeable authority system. There's a lot of strategic approach to it, but it goes through that. It's happening on the back end of my business. So literally, I, as I'm on here, booked two sales calls with people who are already messaging me while I was on here. Um, and this is what you wanna see, right? You wanna see people who are already coming in saying, oh my gosh, I watched your, your thing and I'm 100% pre-sold into you. And there's pieces that go into that, right? Like my clients create methodology that then makes that mini series where it's pretty much pre-selling, but it's essentially a sales system working in the background of your business so that as leads are coming in, they're going through the system, they're coming out the other side saying, what's the next step I wanna work with you? So launching does something similar, but it's something that requires you to be on, right? You have to go live. You have to sit there and walk through the, the, the four or five days of exhausting processes. This happens where the leads are coming in, they're coming out the other side. So they're coming out the other end of this literal system, this sales system, saying, oh my gosh, this is exactly what I need. And they're, they're pre-selling themselves through the process because everything is set up to help them make decisions. Let me know if that makes sense, Vanessa. Great question. Because it's hard when we've been taught all along that launches are the only way to make money in our business. And again, I'm not downplaying that launches can be great, but they're exhausting and they're not really sustainable long-term if you're not gonna go through these cash, uh, these cash roller coasters, right? Because what happens with launches is people make a lot of money during a launch and then in between launches, they don't have anything to sustain that. So there's a lack of predictability. There's no way for you to know month after month what's gonna be coming in unless you're launching all the time. And then that burns out your audience and it takes a lot of effort, right? Versus having a sales system that's evergreen in the back end of your business with predictability, you can say, if I have this amount of people come through it, I book this many calls and this many calls turns into this many clients. So with predictability, you can create a, a, a predictable stream of income coming into your business month after month without you even having to do a challenge altogether. Like I have clients who come to me and literally drop challenges altogether. They drop live launching altogether. And it's crazy how, how freeing it can be that you can literally be on vacation, have leads coming through your sales system and saying yes, and, and not have to be doing all the stuff that live launching does, okay? So again, I want you to do that. Look at your marketing strategy. What's bringing in the best clients for you right now? See how you can actually optimize it and try to start getting rid of everything else. If I could give you one word of wisdom, even if you're not ready to scale, but you're ready to grow, 
Start looking for opportunities to cut back, take things out, because that's only going to dilute your impact, dilute how you show up. You want less, okay? Next, I'm gonna show you why I broke all the rules when it comes to business growth, because I wanna set up my business for long-term success. So here's the deal. Most people in the online industry, every guru out there will tell you to never slow down on your sales and marketing, that that's like a recipe for disaster, or you're, it's a do or die situation, you have to be running your business on all cylinders, right? Or your business will come crashing down if you're not constantly feeding the marketing beast that it is, right? But the truth is, when you scale, you're also going to amplify the cracks in your business. Nobody talks about this, Nobody tells you this, but when you are scaling, if you have cracks in your business, you are also going to amplify those cracks, okay? You are going to amplify all the things that are not quite working or are have cracks within them that, that seem to have things that fall through, okay? I'm gonna give you an example, okay? So if you have cracks in your system, those get bigger when you scale. If you have cracks in how you deliver your offer and the results you get for your clients, those get amplified when you scale. If you have cracks in your mindset, those get amplified when you scale. Nobody talks about this. Nobody talks about the fact that when you scale and all of a sudden you're in front of more people, you have more clients coming in, all the things that were maybe like you were pushing to the side is not a big deal, I'll just figure them out, all of a sudden become amplified, they grow. So if your mindset is a mess, that's gonna grow when you scale. If your system is you know, has some cracks and some things aren't working as, as best as they can, that's gonna amplify when you grow, okay? If your offer is great at getting good results, but you know, there's some cracks in that offer, it's gonna amplify when you grow. Nobody talks about this because they're so focused on the revenue, on generating sales in their business. And while that absolutely matters, I don't know about you, but I'm in this for the long haul. I've been here for 11 years in this business. I refuse to cut corners when it comes to that. Okay, so I want you guys to think about the fact that scaling isn't just about revenue generation. So drop one if you guys are hearing this because I want you to hear it. It's not simply about more marketing, more revenue generation. It's about uh, understanding the, the cracks you have in your business and knowing that you have to fill those cracks because they will get amplified. So drop a one because I want you to hear that. Nobody out there talks about this. They're constantly talking about grow, 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 get your revenue up, do all these great things, and those are great. But if your business can't sustain that, meaning that those cracks start to break even bigger and bigger, it's only gonna be downhill. I have seen too many people, too many people who scale the seven, eight figures and their business cannot sustain it because there are too many cracks in their process, okay? So I took a huge risk. I knew that I was not willing to half-ass anything. I was not willing to have a business that the cracks just got amplified and it started to break, okay? So knowing that rapid growth requires you to break down so that you can build it back up. So that's exactly what I did. I broke pieces down. The pieces that had cracks, I broke them apart. I literally shred them to pieces and built them back up. I started with my marketing, which I already talked to you about. I looked down and I was like, what are all the things? And I took it all apart and put it back together. But then what I also realized is, while I had success, successfully scaled my business to 100K months as a team of one, I knew that that wasn't sustainable, that I had run myself into the ground, and that I knew that I had to get serious about creating the support in my business that it needed to scale. So that things didn't fall through those cracks, that I didn't burn myself out in the process, so that I didn't start to resent my business which I've seen so many business owners right now in the online market space who grew really quickly and couldn't sustain it because they were burnt out and they had to take a hold. You're gonna see so many people that are like now coming back after that. I decided that I wasn't gonna do that. So I hired Erin, who's not here right now. Um, she works as a growth strategist in, in hiring. So she focuses on team building. So we went through, identified who my next best hire would be. She helped me hire, onboard, and train this person, who is Julia, who's here with us today. So shout out to Julia. So that they could get up to speed and fully support me quickly. I brought on a full-time in my VA, full-time VA in my business. It means I went from literally having no support to deciding I needed full-time support in my business. Because I knew that I didn't wanna just work on tasks that I had right now, 
but I wanted to help fill the spaces in my future opportunity. Because when you start thinking of your business as a bigger entity than the right now that you're in right now, and you're looking at it as like, I'm gonna be a seven, eight figure business, right? Bringing on that next, and I don't just mean financially, I mean impact and the way you're supporting people, you have to step into a different role in your business. And I knew that what got me to this point of a role of me being the go-getter and doing everything, and, and even though I was running my business in 15 hours a day, at scale, I couldn't maintain that. So I went from having literally people that were doing project by project basis to bringing on a full-time VA, knowing that that's where I was going and I needed to be really clear on not only the things I'm doing right now, but where I wanted to go. Because if you are not preparing for the next level of your business and you're literally setting yourself up for the time you're in right now, your business is always gonna grow slowly. It's always gonna be this like push back. Okay, if you wanna to grow to a totally new level at rapid speed, set yourself up for that success right now. Tell yourself, what would the CEO of a seven figure business supporting hundreds of thousands of people do right now? And if the answer is I bring on full-time help, do that. If you have the opportunity to do that, do that. Because that is what's necessary to take you. And I don't even mean if you, let's go down one level. If you're at, I'm a baby business and I'm making you know three to $5,000 a month, what do I need to do? What is the $10,000, $20,000 version of me? And we're using revenue as just a way for us to really look at this. But what is, if I'm helping 10 clients a, um, a month right now, what does the 100 client per month version of me look like? What do I need in place in order to do that? Because if you're operating at a level of a 10 person of like where I'm at right now, you're only going to bring in where you're at right now. Does that make sense? Drop a two if this is making sense, because I want to be clear. You need to be able to operate at the level of what you want to create, okay? So that was number one, is I brought on a full-time VA, full-time support to support me in scaling so that I could be able to scale my business without burning me out. Next, I found cracks in my delivery, okay? I found cracks in how I delivered my offer. Now, let me explain what I mean. Meaning that my clients were getting incredible results in my program, but, the process was very labor intensive for me. So I knew that if I wanted to scale this one program that I had gone all in on, that program needed to be able to operate in a way that didn't require so much energy for me. So I didn't make that into a course, it's still a very high touch program, but the difference was how could my clients get those results even faster and even easier than requiring me to do so many hand holding steps within the process. So I hired, and by the way, I always hire my clients because they're so incredible and they're the revolutionizing their industry. So I hired a client impact architect, shout out to Erica, who went through my entire Sustainable Profit Academy program. She helped me rebuild it from the ground up because I knew that right as, as my program was, it was requiring too much energy for me, was requiring too much of me to be hand-holding every step of the process. So I knew that if I wanted to scale my business from helping tens of clients to hundreds of clients a month, I needed to ensure that my clients would get the same results, the same incredible results at scale. Okay, which allowed me to stay in my zone of genius, giving them the high touch, the support they needed without having to get caught up in creating more worksheets and more trainings and oh my gosh, what's wrong and how come they need so much help from me, right? So shout out to Erica, who's helping me take my already amazing program and turn it into the most revolutionary program of all time that allows me to not have to be so included in every single step of the process, okay? So understanding the cracks, understanding what's requiring the most of you and filling for those cracks is vital when it comes to scaling your business, okay? So far, you guys keep it up with me. So drop a three if you're ready for the third thing that I invested in, okay? So number one was I invested in someone to help, help me bring on a full-time VA because I knew I needed the support. Number two was I brought on Erica, the client impact architect, to help me revolutionize my program to again, take it to the next level. So I removed all the cracks out of that, okay? And then number three was I invested in sales leadership. I invested in, in stepping into a new leadership role in my business that was really freaking hard. Nobody talks about this. Nobody talks about the fact that when you scale your business, and you start to bring more people into your world, you kind of have to let go of control. You have to let go of the thing, this baby that you've built. I spent 11 years building a business from the ground up and I had to be willing to let go of that control and step into leadership. 
okay? So it wasn't just about revenue. If you notice, none of the things I really did had anything to do with like Facebook ads. I didn't even mention any of that kind of stuff. These are things that are unconventional because they truly speak to the foundation of strategic scaling, okay? So I knew that growing my business meant I had to grow as a leader, meant I had to learn how to be a CEO, how I would lead a team, bring, create a culture, create a space that was meant for more, meant for millions, serving millions, making millions, doing all of that, okay? Because growth happens for everyone around me and that meant I had to step into a leadership role. So I literally invested in a leadership program so that I could be able to do that. Okay, so I want you to take some time and look at where are the cracks in your business? Where are the opportunities for you to be able to see what's maybe just a crack, maybe just slightly not working because that will only get amplified as you scale. And again, I don't care if you're at a, a space in your business where you feel like, Naz, I'm not at scaling, I'm growing. These are important things that I wish I had known in the growth stage of my business because I would have wasted so much less time on the things that didn't matter. Okay, so I want you to look at it. Are you struggling with mindset? That's a crack that's only gonna be amplified as you grow. If you feel like you need to step up as a leader, that's only a crack that's gonna amplify as you grow. If you feel like you don't have a system for selling um, on autopilot in the back end of your business, that's a crack that's going to amplify as you grow because what you're doing right now may work in the temporary, but it may not work at the level that you want to. Okay, identifying those cracks in your business and filling for them is vital if you want long-term growth. If you don't wanna be one of those people who starts scaling really quickly and then can't sustain it, okay? So I want you guys to hear that. So far, so good, are you guys understanding? You see why I'm saying these are so unconventional because I'm not telling you I'm running ads and I'm doing all this. These are the things that I feel like nobody talks about in business that are absolutely the answer to massive rapid scaling, okay? And last, I wanna tell you why these three shifts practically guarantee me to 10X my growth because here's the deal. Number one, if my offer is getting incredible results, I've said this time and time again, this is literally a part of my entire methodology. If my offer is getting incredible results, that means more and more people will go and talk about my offer. More and more of my clients will go and refer another person to work with me, which means my business just grows exponentially it's literally moving in a huge fast direction because my clients are doing some of the work for me. They're literally sharing my message with other people. That doesn't happen unless you have an offer that works at scale. That's why that's one of the big pieces of our methodology is results and retention. How can you ensure that your clients are going to get results at scale? Because here's the down and dirty that the online marketing space won't talk about. If your business is simply only scaling revenue but not scaling an impact, then it's a recipe for you failing. It's a recipe for you creating some really good hot months, but not being able to sustain it, okay? So I want you guys to hear that. You need to be able to do that. So that in itself allows me to know that I can 4X my, my revenue because every client I bring on brings on three additional clients for me. I'm able to literally take one client and from the referrals that they give me or retaining that same client, I literally 4X my revenue that I make off of one client. That's called a lifetime value. So retention and results is vital to your business. Number two is I mentioned to you the guys that I simplified and removed everything out of my marketing process. I narrowed it down to one system. Why? Because I knew that this system produced results again and again. That's my bingeable authority system. It's exactly what I teach my clients to do. Why? Because the, the as attention spans in the market space dwindle and people are getting more and more frustrated with the old school marketing tactics of webinars and constantly selling. We are speaking to those people who wanna make decisions quickly. This is something that never goes out of style. 18 years in marketing, I can tell you, I've seen this again and again, in some way, shape or form, that speaking to clients who want to make an investment, who are ready and seeking out solutions is always in style. It's not a tactic, it's literally strategic growth. So that's how the bingeable authority system works. It literally speaks to ready to invest clients, who are seeking out a solution, brings them to the other side pre-sold, ready to work with you, okay? And then again, lastly, is me getting really strategic with how I showed up in things. I mentioned to you that, again, I'm not creating new content. I'm not doing more stuff. I have a message that works. I'm just doubling down on it, okay? So these are the shifts that practically guarantee my business being able to grow because I have the support, I have the leadership, I have the offering and the delivery that can withstand that so that if I did bring in thousands of more leads, my business could grow without falling down in the back end. Because that's what a lot of people don't tell you about 
is that if your business can't sustain it on the back end, it won't work, okay? And this is why I'm so freaking passionate about my EZS method is because this is ex the core components of what I teach to my clients is knowing how you create your methodology, the things that don't go out of style, how you can literally create demand in your marketplace so that I have clients who literally are saying to me, people are coming to me. I don't know how they're finding me, but they're jumping into my inbox saying, I want to work with you because they became the only solution in their industry. I'm not talking about standing out. I'm not talking about having to show up in all the places and be louder than the next person. I'm talking about driving people to you. That happens through innovation. When you create something innovative, people are literally drawn to you. You're no longer chasing other people. Step two is that bingeable authority system. You need a sales system. If you want growth, if you want scaling in your business, you need a system that literally runs in the background of your business, bringing leads and turning them into actual clients. And I'm talking ready to invest clients. And then three is that results in retention. Being able to sustain a profitable business is about results for your clients so that you can retain them long term. Okay. So if you're reading, hearing all this and you're like, oh my gosh, I really want to be able to get to my business to a point where I can scale to 100K months, 200K months, 300K months like my clients are doing, I want to invite you to jump on a diagnostic call with me. Okay. What we're going to do on this call is we're going to talk about what it looks like for your business to have a client acquisition system in place in your business using, and I'll tell you how my EZS method works specifically to you. I'll look at your current client acquisition. I'll share with you where I see the, the opportunities and the gaps, and I'll share with you how I can support you in filling those. Because if you're super serious about impacting millions of lives and making millions in your business and knowing that this is not a hobby business, you know that it's meant for something way bigger, then I want to invite you to taking that step because I don't want you to operate at a level that isn't going to allow you to grow. So if that's you, drop call in the comments or feel free to message me. I only have three spaces available for this week. So if that's you, drop call, I will get you in. Again, business diagnostic call. We're going to look at your business. We're going to look at currently where your business is operating at a, a high level, where those gaps are so that we can look at how we remove those or how we feel for them and how my EZS method can actually systemize your growth so that you don't get to a point where you're like, oh my gosh, I don't even know where to begin because pouring gasoline on something that's not working is just, again, a recipe for burning your business down. And I don't want that for you guys. I want you guys to be able to elevate your business quickly, attracting ready to invest clients, attracting those people who already know that they want and are seeking out a solution to work with you, but also having the sales system that supports you in being able to achieve that growth because again if you're bringing in leads but you don't have a way to convert them all that's going to happen is you're going to have a parking lot full of an email list or a facebook group of people saying you're so inspirational but never purchasing from you and then being able to deliver those results to your clients knowing how you deliver and package that that to your clients so that they get the results that they want so if that's you drop a call or send me a message we'll set up a time i hope this was helpful to you guys um, and I hope that you guys got some insight that I, again, had always wished someone had just given me the down and dirty. If you have questions that I didn't answer on this about scaling your business and knowing what it is and, and wanting insider details, if you guys don't know this about me, I'm all about real talk and I will absolutely be willing to share any of that. So please feel free to drop your questions into the comments. And again, if you want to grab one of my um, spots for that business, business diagnostic call that is absolutely complimentary, make sure you drop a call or just send me a DM and will set you up. So I hope you guys have an amazing day and thank you for joining me on today's uh, training. I'll see you guys later.